Hello, everyone. <clears throat> My name is Skylar Earl. Uh, I'm a member of the Humanitarian Open Street Map team, and I'm here to talk to you about a project that's actually somewhat related. It's called Open Aerial Map. An open Aerial Map is a free and open archive of satellite and aerial imagery for the entire world. Uh, and I guess I should be grateful for the scheduling of these talks because uh, some of the complexity of what I was about to explain has just been explained for me, which is great. Um, but so uh, you're familiar probably with the kind of workflow of OpenStreetMap uh, at this point. Uh, you know, typically OpenStreetMappers will go out in the world and they'll collect, uh, collect data with a GPS receiver and they'll take notes on a piece of paper and they'll come back and they'll uh, digitize those notes and those GPS traces and put it up on the web. And obviously in a disaster, we can't send people out in the field with GPS receivers. Uh, so it's well known that uh, OpenStreetMappers contributed to um, the uh, you know, the mapping of Haiti after the earthquake. What is less well known is that a bunch of volunteers, a smaller number of volunteers, put together a, a service to collect all of the imagery that was made available uh, after that disaster and put it up in a place where uh, OpenStreetMap contributors could progressively digitize and annotate it and turn it into an almost complete map of Port-au-Prince. Um, so how do you do this, right? And on the technical side, basically, you, you get the imagery from wherever you get it from. Uh, we had imagery from Digital Globe and from GOI and from a variety of other sources, which is really great. But uh, we decided to set up tile servers. So we put it somewhere on the net. We had to you know, reproject it and then uh, reformat it so that it was in an efficient form for delivery, and then configure uh, web mapping services, and then configure tiling services on top of that, and then publish those URLs on a wiki which seems kind of silly, but that's where we had to put them. And then you repeat this process until basically you can't keep your eyes open anymore because you've been working on it for 36 hours straight. And the problem with this, of course, is that when you do this on an ad hoc basis and everything is just kind of set up during an emergency, then six months later when somebody is doing system maintenance, they rm-rf in the wrong directory, and boom, all of your processed imagery suddenly disappears off the net. And you don't find out about it until somebody emails and says, hey, I was using that, what happened? Um, and then, you know, in addition to getting uh, imagery from disasters, obviously there are other sources of imagery. There's uh, space agencies, there's aerial imagery uh, that's collected by municipal and provincial governments, and of course there's grassroots aerial imagery, right? So it'd be great to have a place to put all of this stuff. So we developed an architecture. Uh, this is actually still the best copy of the architecture diagram I have. Uh, but it's, it's, a, it's, a open, it's a based on open source software, and it's a three-tiered architecture that allows us to uh, scalably and redundantly deliver satellite and aerial imagery uh, to end users for the purpose of, uh, well, for all kinds of purposes, crisis mapping being one of them. Uh, so we have kind of three kind of primary components, and the catalog component uh, is the first and probably the most important one. And this is just where we catalog all of the aerial and satellite imagery that's out there on the net that is freely redistributable. And this part actually already exists, like I said, in the form of a, of a free software project. And uh, this has the wiki nature, right? So the project needs volunteers to help find all of this imagery because uh, there's a lot of it that's already out there that's freely reusable, um, and then kind of manage it, massage it, tweak it, help build mosaics. Um, and then the archive component, of course, is, is where all the imagery gets stored. And we have managed to architect uh, things in such a way where the archive component of Open Aerial Map is just HTTP servers, right? So we, do, we get web servers on the internet, we can put the imagery up there, we have a way of delivering it. Now this image, I think, I'm actually not sure if this is Digital Globe or GUI, but the point is that this is tiles. There should be like a tile grid drawn over top of this, right? OGC compliant web services are great but they are notoriously slow. They are not usually optimized for latency. But latency is your number one concern when you have, uh, you know, when your end users are, are volunteers, right? You don't want to keep them waiting. And of course, all of that imagery that's delivered at low latency, those tile servers need to be uh, deployed across the internet redundantly so that you, they cannot be sudo rm-rf by accident. Um, now, with Open Aerial Map, ah, the, there should be lines through everything except for uh, repeat. Right, because the idea is that Open Aerial Map takes all these steps and compresses them. So after put it on Open Aerial Map, there should be strike through because all that stuff is just sort of taken care of for you. And so we want to be able to provide to the to the community, right, a service where, for example, we can take imagery from wherever it comes from, right, and and provide it to the crisis mapping community using scalable services. That, that just work, that provide low latency to end users. Um, we want to build storage partnerships so that we can uh, find places to put all of the imagery that we can get, you know, from 15 meter Landsat imagery all the way down to donated 50 centimeter imagery, uh, you know, from, from aerial uh, photography or satellite providers. And so we need a place to put this, right? So we're looking to form partnerships with, uh, for example, academic organizations. Uh, and then we need user partnerships, right? So all this imagery that's being collected under the Open Aerial Map project, we want, we want people to use it, right? So like acute crisis mapping is one possible use case, but there's all kinds of other potential use cases, like, uh, for example, environmental change detection. Um, and so basically, in a nutshell, that is Open Aerial Map. 
Um, uh, we hope that it will be a service and a complement to the other activities of the crisis mapping community. And uh, you know, we would love your, uh, we'd love you uh, to, to use the project, and we'd love your support. Thanks.